Hello, sports fans. And if there's any remaining football fans out there after the NFL is over, then hey, football fans. If you have not been under a rock for the last many, many months, maybe a year, maybe however many months it's been, you know that the there's going to be a new spring football league, and it's going to be the UFL. Do you Exciting news, folks. The UFL is gearing up to kick off, bringing a fresh wave of football frenzy to fans worldwide. With top-tier talent, innovative rules, and a passion for the game like never before, get ready for a whole new level of gridiron action. From electrifying plays to nail-biting finishes, the UFL promises to redefine the way we experience football. Stay tuned for a game-changing season unlike anything you've seen before. United Football League. And the United Football League is going to be a combination of last year's XFL and last year's USFL. Um, there's good news and bad news to report about this new league. Um, the uh, And then there's mediocre news. Uh, a lot of people like the rules that the that the leagues used, and uh, they they pretty much use the same rules. And so this league is going to keep those rules, particularly the kickoff rule, where uh, the teams line up only like 20 yards away from each other or 15 yards away from each other, and then the kicker kicks the ball, and nobody can move until the um, the uh, kick returner catches the ball. So a lot of people like that kickoff rule. In fact, the NFL is, is, is banting about the idea of adopting that same kickoff rule. So, um, you know, the rules are going to be the same. <clears throat> you, can, you can do two forward passes, but the first pass has to be behind the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, I think you can have two guys in motion, too. But uh, anyway, I didn't want to talk about the rules. The rules are basically the same as they were for both leagues, uh, which is, um, is, that's a medium thing. It didn't, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just a medium thing, it's, it's fine. Um, the good is that each team will play in their own home park or their own home city. So uh, the... Um, the Michigan Panthers will play in Detroit, and the D.C. Defenders, which will be my team and was my team for the um, XFL, will play in D.C. and so forth and so on. The um, Arlington Renegades will play in Arlington, Texas. So that's good because the USFL, if you recall, was doing hub cities. The latest thing for them was there was like three hub cities where the games were all being held. And uh, that, was, that was BS. So at least now you've got a league where all of the teams are playing in their own home cities. That's very good. The bad parts are the things that were bad about both leagues separately and still are bad about this league. This league only has eight teams and a 10-game schedule, which is exactly what both of the other teams had. Only eight teams and a 10-game schedule. That is BS. You need at least, I would say you'd need at least 16 teams to be a viable league. They should have 16 teams and at least a 12 to 14 game schedule, I would say. You know, I mean, you're not competing with the NFL at all. Like, even going through the playoffs, even if they had a 16 game schedule and then playoffs, they still wouldn't come up against the next NFL season. So I don't know why. I mean, they've got plenty, they've got scads of time to do this. Why don't they just you know, have a 16-game schedule, a 14-game schedule, and, like, um, 14 to 16 teams. I don't understand why they can't do that, but they don't. And so let's discuss the teams. The um, the teams will be, let's move me over here, the, the eight teams will be divided into two divisions or conferences, and one conference will be the XFL conference, and one will be the USFL conference. Uh, so the USFL conference will be the Birmingham Stallions, who were the champions 
of the USFL in their first season, uh, their first recent season, and I don't remember in the second season if they were as well. But uh, anyway, the Houston Roughnecks, the Memphis Showboats, and the Michigan Panthers. Now, the Memphis Showboats are relatively new. I don't think they played in the USFL, uh, the new, you know, rebooted USFL at all, or if they did, it was only in their second season because they've only had two seasons. Then the XFL Conference will be the Arlington Renegades, who are the current champions of the XFL, um, beating the D.C. Defenders, who are also in that conference, and the San Antonio Brahmas and the St. Louis Battlehawks, who were a pretty good team. The Brahmas, <coughs> I don't think the Brahmas were very good, but the Battlehawks were pretty good. So, anyway, uh, that is your eight-team league right there. Um, and these games will start on the uh, 30th of March. And so let's take a look at that. Uh, week 1, here you can see we've got week 1. And uh, that uh, Saturday, March 30th, will be the Birmingham Stallions at the Arlington Renegades. And then the St. Louis Battlehawks will take on the Michigan Panthers. While the D.C. Defenders will visit the San Antonio Brahmas and the Memphis Showboats will take on the Houston Rucknecks. So that is your week one schedule. I'm not going to go through the entire schedule, the entire 10 weeks, but this is week one uh, on March 30th and 31st, Saturday and Sunday at the end of March when the league will be starting. And like I said, they really should have more games and more teams. That's what they're lacking I like that they're all playing in their own um, home parks now, or you know, in home cities. But they need to expand it to, uh, you know, to to have more teams and more games. Uh, if you if you want to be a viable league, you've got to have more than eight teams, and you got to have more than ten games because this is just, you know, I mean, really, the USFL when I was a kid. The first USFL, that was a great league. Um, this is really, I just view it as like a minor leagues for the NFL. It's a chance for guys to play and show what they can do and maybe make an NFL roster like, you know, like a, a minor league uh, uh, baseball would be for major league baseball clubs. So um, that's how I view this. Um, but the old USFL was like its own football league, and it had retired guys, you know, got, well, not retired because they were play, still playing. But it had older guys that couldn't play in the NFL anymore, like Brian Sipe and Joe Cribbs, or maybe this was Joe Cribbs before he was good enough to make the Bills. I don't know. But anyway, they had guys that ended up or were previously like mainstream NFL players. Reggie White. Reggie White was in the old USFL. This USFL doesn't have that. You're not going to see like, um, you know, like a Philip Rivers in this league. For whatever reason, it's not going to happen. Um, you're not going to see, and, and the washed up players that you see, like the uh, guy for Alabama the that's right now playing for the St. Louis Battlehawks, the quarterback, um, I forget his name, but he was an old, uh, uh, you know, a former Alabama quarterback. Those guys were guys that never really were mainstream in the NFL. They didn't start. They didn't play a lot of games. They, you know, kicked around. So that's not really, I mean, that's not like a, you know, like a Phillip Rivers, you know, type guy. So they don't have that, and that was, I think, part of the mystique that the old league had, the old USFL. So... They're never going to get to that. But anyway, those are my those are my thoughts on the league. I mean, I will follow it. I will watch it. Maybe I'll do uh, you know preview videos and like picks. Maybe I don't know. I'm still trying to think about whether I want to do that or not. Um, but um, I mean, because once you've seen two or three weeks, it becomes apparent who's going to win every every game because. The talent level is, well, first of all, the talent level of this league to the NFL is, you know, long, big, huge. 
But then the talent level from the better teams to the worst teams is also pretty huge. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, those are my thoughts about the league. They really need to get more serious. They need to bring in, try to bring in former NFL players that would want to extend their their careers a little bit. I mean, I don't know that Philip Rivers even wants to, but you know, there's got to be guys that. Older veterans, veteran guys who, you know, like Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco, right now, he's getting, like, second-string gigs and starting only when the starter's injured in the NFL. But in the USFL, he could be a starting quarterback for any of these teams, and it would be great. So, you know, that's the kind of thing I'd like to see. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you plan to watch the USFL? Um uh, do you have a favorite team? Mine, like I said, is the D.C. Defenders. Now, uh, full disclosure, I also liked the Michigan Panthers from the old USFL, but I would, uh, of the two, I'm going to pick the uh, D.C. Defenders since I live in the D.C. area. So let me know what you guys think, uh, if you plan to watch, um, if you're excited for the league, if you're not excited for it and you'll only watch it if you're bored. Um and as a reminder, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed, and leave a you know leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, otherwise, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.